good fortune of having some friends over at my house. They're all theoretical physicists and they work at the very frontiers of the field. I'm going to ask them to say very briefly what they do and what they consider to be the most important unsolved problems today in the world of physics. Modik Parikh is a professor of physics at Arizona State University. He worked with Frank Wilczek, who got the Nobel Prize in Physics, and he does a lot of interesting things. Modek, tell us what you do. Well, right, I've been interested uh, mostly about gravity, and uh, this is the 100th anniversary of Einstein's discovery of his fantastic, magnificent theory of general relativity, which turned the study of gravity into the study of space-time. So I work on black holes, and that's um, uh, those are the objects which we hope will, uh, will help us. What are the most important problems in black hole physics, do you think? Um, for black holes, uh, there's a problem that's uh, been around for 40 years, uh, still unsolved, and it's a problem that uh, come, goes back to Stephen Hawking, uh, who showed that black holes could actually emit radiation. Uh, and uh, the question then was, uh, what would happen to the information inside these black holes? And when the the radiation would cause the black hole to evaporate and disappear, and then uh, so is the information that was previously inside the black hole lost, or is it somehow encoded in the uh, in the burning embers of the black hole in the, in the radiation? And you don't think Hawking solved the problem yet? No. Okay. Amadali, you've worked on a lot of theoretical problems, but most recently on multi quark hadrons. Tell us. How you found them, whether why you believe they actually exist, and why it's important. Well, these multi quark hadrons uh, uh, were speculated actually almost at the same time that uh, Murray Gelman speculated uh, or postulated the existence of quarks. In fact, uh, he mentioned their existence uh, in his paper. Now the modern version of quark model is uh, quantum chromodynamics, a theory of strong interaction. And this theory uh, allows uh, the formation of multi-quark states. Uh, that means that uh, it is possible uh, to form uh, uh, four quark states or five quark states uh, which can appear in experiments uh, as uh, physical particles. Uh, so they have been discovered uh, uh, starting in 2004 in an experiment in Bell and since then in many experiments uh, and the latest one, uh, the pentaquarks, the five quark state uh, at CERN. At the and you've played an important role in this I believe but let me go on to ask you another question. You've done work on time reversal invariance as seen in a certain kind of meson, the B meson. How do we know that time reversal gets violated? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, okay, so uh, it started uh, actually in 1964 uh, uh, by the discovery of what is called CP violation, that means matter antimatter asymmetry. And uh, so there are mathematical theorems which uh, say that. Uh, the product of uh, matter-antimatter asymmetry and time reversal invariance, their product is invariant. So, so time invariance, <coughs> time uh, reversal, uh, uh, or, uh, or, or time reversal invariance has been now measured uh, in several experiments, also lately in B mesons, uh, in experiments uh, at uh, at Babar, in which uh, they have uh, seen uh, the uh, and tangled uh, B, B bar meson and have uh, carried out experiments which prove that uh, also time reversal invariance. Uh, yeah, but you can't really reverse the direction of time, so why do we, why do physicists even worry about that? Yeah, okay, so uh, I mean they are more worried uh, in some sense uh, in matter antimatter asymmetry because this is something which uh, uh, is. Uh, uh, observed. I mean, in the universe, uh, there is uh, preponderance of matter, but uh, uh, for every uh, single uh, proton, perhaps, uh, or for 10 to the 9 protons, there is just one antiproton. So this uh, great symmetry in the universe, uh, I mean, that is the main uh, object to understand. So you're worried about the world being made up of matter, huh? 
I mean, right. that's, it's, is... it's so obvious to everyone that the world is made up of matter and you guys worry about why it's not made up of antimatter. Yes. There's a principal interest uh, in uh, b meson physics. Uh, but apart from the fact that uh, the uh, modern theory of particle physics, the standard model, uh, is not a complete theory and, uh, and there are several uh, uh, elements which are missing. And these experiments uh, uh, in B meson physics, uh, they allow uh, through the study of very rare processes uh, to see if uh, uh, beyond the standard models, uh, model particles and interactions are present. So, so these are the two main, uh, main interests in me. Okay, let's ask uh, Shaheen Rouhani. Shaheen, you're from Iran. In Iran, do people worry about such things? You've been uh, the head of your physics department for a very long time. You're one of the leading physicists of Iran. So tell us, what are the Iranians worrying about? Um, I work in a conformal field theory, which is a kind of quantum field theory. And uh, the interest in quantum field theory is that it is a, a, a framework in which many of the physical theories uh, are, are formulated. So it is in, in our interest uh, as physicists to uh, have a better understanding of this theory, the, the quantum field. Yeah, but that's too abstract. Tell us, tell the ordinary person what good your research is. Um, so the, it, it, it has many aspects. Uh, it, one aspect would be to better understand the uh, nature of the forces at very small distances, fundamental theories that Professor Ali just talked about, about theories about particle physics. Also, that there are applications in condensed matter physics. You can look at condensed matter physics using field theory, and then that will have applications in uh, producing things, uh, solid state uh, uh, devices, and so on. Any better understanding of the interactions of uh, physics will lead to such technological uh, products which are of use to human beings. Um, but to have the, the better understanding, you do need a better framework. The framework that people uh, invented at the beginning of the 20th century, which was quantum mechanics, only goes a certain way. After that, you have to start using quantum field theory, which deals with large number of degrees of freedom. Therefore, a better understanding can come. So, Shaheen, we look from Pakistan towards, in, towards Iran and see that there's a very thriving theoretical physics community over there. Is what we see correct? Do you see that uh, there is good, vibrant theoretical physics being done in Iran or is this just an illusion? I think, I think good things are being done. It is, uh, of course, not of the standard that you see in Europe and America, but they, uh, they, there is very good growth of it. So over the years, over the next few years we might see some very good things come out. Um, the numbers of people who do physics has increased, the number of good physics departments in Iran have increased and uh, we see a, a spread of uh, different uh, specialities among the different departments. So there, it is a, it, the all hopeful signs are coming out, uh, although um, uh, in absolute magnitude, it still is very small. Um, you know, it has to be something like 10 or 20 times what it is now to be, to be of significance. You do not have any interference from the political authorities in this matter? Uh, not, so far, no. <laughs> but the political authorities have, in fact, uh, watched us with, uh, I, I guess with interest, hoping uh, that we will do better and better. Sometimes they have helped, sometimes they have not. But I hope that uh, this situation will keep on and we can continue for another 10 years of growth, uh, which, where we should get us somewhere. Um, I should also add that uh, so far uh, the Iranian physics has uh, improved in, term, in terms of quantity. What I'm hoping for is that 
quality will also be added to that and we will produce uh, interesting results. Okay, that's great. Vakar, you've worked in gravity, you've worked on very important issues related to gravity, space time. What do you work on presently and where do you think this field is going and where should it go? So presently uh, I'm working on one aspect of quantum gravity. Uh, quantum gravity is an attempt to combine the two great theories of the 20th century, general relativity and quantum theory. And the problem with quantum gravity, formulating a theory of quantum gravity, is that the two theories, quantum theory and general relativity, rest on very, very different foundations. So here's an analogy. Uh, quantum theory is uh, a theory of matter where the interactions between matter are being played out on a stage, just like actors in a, in a play. And the stage is fixed. In general relativity, what happens is that the stage responds to the actors. And so it's a, uh, that's at the, at the level where we're not even using quantum theory. But now when we use quantum theory, it is as if the actors on the stage are quantum objects and the stage itself is a quantum object and we have no clue how to actually formulate the theory. So at this conference, uh, you read out a paper that I heard with great interest where you said that the cosmological constant problem may not be a very big problem. Uh, yes, so the perspective I'm taking is something that has been hinted at by distinguished physicists in the past uh, who argue that the problem of the cosmological constant should really include, uh, be formulated in the quantum theory of gravity. So the work I'm doing is a first attempt at a formulation where we look at the cosmological constant problem where gravity is quantized and matter is quantized. And preliminary uh, results of this indicate that the old version of the cosmological constant may not apply anymore in this way of looking at it where both matter and gravity are quantum. Great. Now I'm going to ask uh, everyone here to say in one sentence what is the problem in theoretical physics that they wish to see solved. So. Um, let me begin with you, Malik. I would like to understand what time is. Ahmed Ali. I would like to understand uh, the uh, matter antimatter asymmetry or bearing on asymmetry of the universe in terms of fundamental interactions. Shaheen. Um, I like to understand uh, non perturbative effects in field theory. Uh, I have to be abstract, sorry. You want to solve QCD? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, would, okay. I would like to get uh, at least one insight in my lifetime, whoever uh, provides this insight, into uh, how matter and geometry can be combined into a quantum theory of gravity. At present, we have no such insight. I thought you would give a different, um, different answer. You would say that it is the nature of time that I would like to understand. It is included in the problem. Uh, one insight which may include the problem of time. I already said that. <laughs> okay. already said that, yes. Okay. I want to ask him, uh, I heard uh, read in American Physical Society bulletin that, uh, that uh, near Kung we are going to convert uh, uh, one of these uh, nuclear facilities uh, into a fundamental physics lab. Is this uh, something which you also heard? Uh, it, this is, yes, uh, planned, but uh, I haven't heard any details and I don't know whether anything will actually come of it. Uh, what I would like it to become is a fundamental physics uh, research lab. But um, then, but there are, I, I think, other uh, things are on the board uh, for perhaps applied physics applications, uh, technological applications. Um, I we hope we live in hope. See, something uh, some sort of fundamental research lab. 
so, uh, Malik, you mentioned that you'd like to see a solution to the problem of time. Uh, how do you envision that affecting the other problem you mentioned, which is Hawking radiation and, and the problem of black hole evaporation? Well, I think both of them will be uh, will shed light on what is the real nature of space-time. So the reason we study black holes so intensively is because there are these extreme objects which deform, um, deform the geometry of space-time around them. And, as, uh, and in studying them, we hope to really understand how, as you said, matter and gravity come together. So um, the problem of time is part of that, uh, but eventually we'll understand what is space and what is time. I think the problem of quantum gravity must be addressed at a uh, non-perturbative level, which means that we cannot uh, solve the problem of quantum gravity by saying that um, we take uh, space and time which are flat and look at l little ripples on it and then apply quantum theory to those ripples. So we must actually look at space-time as a whole, as a dynamical entity, and uh, attempt to quantize uh, this dynamical entity as a whole, as we do with all other quantum th systems. Okay, I think that's great. We've uh, had a splendid conversation. Thanks, everyone. Thanks Thank very you. much.